gentlemen, good evening viewers. I'm Matthias Aufiku, news editor of the Namibian Sun newspaper. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Evening Review Show. Tonight we'll touch on the tourism sector, but before we get to that, let's first have a look at today's headlines. We're joined in studio tonight by the Managing Director of the Namibia Wildlife Resort, Dr. Matthias Nguangwama. Doctor, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure having you here, especially during these tough times, as uh, your industry is uh, going through unheralded times. Yeah, I think um, it's really... Tough times is an understatement. It's really, we are facing serious challenges. Mm -hmm. And this has been now over 16 months now. It has been now over a year. Yeah. Really tough times we are going through. We hope that uh, maybe by now things will improve a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as you are seeing with your own eyes, things are now getting uh, worse. Yeah. Okay. Um, the tourism economy uh, specifically has been heavily hit by the pandemic. Um, it's NWR. What, are you, what mitigating factors uh, have you and your team put in place? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's true that, um, that COVID-19 since March last year, it was having a serious disruption on the business activities. Mm -hmm. And when I say uh, disruptions, I'm referring to even on the emotional well-being of the employees or the people, you know, motivation levels have been affected, yeah. uh, as well as then the yeah. financial performance has also been affected. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we recently have announced our financial results for October 2020, mm -hmm. and you have seen how we were seeing uh, the type of laws we have recorded. Yeah. This is mainly to deal with the uh, uh, impact of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We were folding our hands. We were trying to come up with mitigating measures. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I can say that uh, 16 months down the line, uh, NWR is still uh, trading or still standing. Yeah. Uh, some of our uh, companies in the tourism industry were not so lucky. I think you have seen that some of them, very big names, have closed. Yeah. We're saying that they implemented some mitigating measures uh, that we are, up to now, uh, a year later, we are still continuing trading. Yeah. I think the mitigating measures is to do with, the, uh, like any business have done, you run quickly to the cost cutting measure. Mm -hmm. uh, it was publicly communicated, you know, those things of cutting the benefits, allowing allowances, you know, and and things like that. Yeah. And to an extent also, we have implemented uh, salary cuts for senior management and board fees. Mm -hmm. All those are mitigating mm -hmm. measures. And then also on the side of revenue, I think you also have seen what NWR have done in terms of coming up with uh, reduced rates and also specials. All these uh, targeted to domestic tourism. Yeah which I will say that uh, they really help us, the Namibian help us to be able 
to survive in these current uh, circumstances. Yeah. And we also publicly thank the Namibian, but I can just repeat it now again that we really, really all the, the domestic tourism because they are the one who carried the Namibia All Love Resort. Yeah. Okay. So if you ask me yeah. about mitigating measures, those are some of the things we have done. Yeah. And also not to forget also we have received uh, assistance also from the shareholder. Mm -hmm. I think it was also public announcement. Uh, we received an amount of uh, about 70 million. Mm -hmm. That is also assistance from shareholders. So all these have... Uh, yeah okay um doctor maybe um because we've seen before the pandemic um, got in, started in full swing last year uh, nwr was on a sort of a recovery path financially um how has it uh, affected that uh, project that you were on that recovery path yeah yeah it's true that uh, immediately the it preceded the, the uh, the COVID year, I can say, uh, which is 2019. In 2019, yeah. October 2019, that yeah. year, the first time in the history of NWR, we recorded a profit of 22 million. Mm -hmm. So we were really looking mm -hmm. forward that now we will take on from there and move into But But uh, just in March 2020, we were humbled. We were proud down to earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were affected by the mm -hmm. pandemic. That then, in that year of October 2020, we went back to a loss of uh, 174 million. Yeah. So clearly, you can see that uh, we were at a sudden high, mm -hmm. high. A few months down the line, to be humbled and proud back to earth. Yeah. Uh, with that, that loss, and it means that then we, we have so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to go to the drawing board with these big measures I told you. We have to go to the drawing board and try to... It's basically try to survive. The, yeah. the, the right word is really survival. Mm -hmm. I think this uh, years mm -hmm. and the next years, it is really about surviving. Yeah. Uh, companies are really in the survival mode. So yeah. I think we, we have to fight to, to, to survive like any company. And that is what we are doing. Yeah. Um, we've, we've heard a lot, especially from the tourism operators in the private sector, um, about the impact of, of the pandemic. Um, where, where is NWR in all this? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question very well. Yeah, I'm saying in, in the recent months, we've, we've heard really the outcry from the private uh, tourism operators. Um, where, where is NWR yes. in all this? Um, are you guys in consultation? Do you communicate with your colleagues in the private sector? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the tourism industries, um, when we say tourism industries, there are really very lot of players in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you get uh, 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 facility operators, you get tour operators, you get uh, car rentals, mm -hmm. get small curios. It's really, I mean, the, it's, a, it's a lot of players in there. But sometimes the public tend to lump them together. Yeah. But when you talk about NWR, we, we really are associated to what is called the Vitality Association of Namibia, a HAN. Mm -hmm. We are a member there. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if you ask me where we are in this, uh, indirectly we are also involved in HAN and that is what, um, where, where our involvement will also get information and so on. Yeah. So I think we, we, we do communicate. I'm not saying there because of the diversity of the industry. Surely you can imagine there will be challenges there. Yeah. But in principle, I'm just telling you that we are associated to the Hospitality Association of Namibia or HAN. Yeah. And some of the things they are doing there will also be uh, indirectly affected on. Oh, uh, and then also you have the, uh, the Tourism Industry Federation, FENATA. Mm -hmm. We are also some way associated. So it's not that we are NWR is a standalone doing it in isolation yeah. we are part of the tourism industry in this case um, han 
and mm. also Fenata mm. and NTV, and you have that. We are mm. Ministry of Environment. We are also part of all these structures. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. There has been calls um, by some sectors of, of the tourism industry calling for a sort of a, a stimulus package to be introduced for the for the industry. What is your take on that? Is it something you will support? Yeah, because the, the, the first argument is to say, and it is a universally lessly acknowledged that the hospitality, tourism, and aviatrices, yeah. that is the one which COVID has really significantly impacted. Yeah. It is not just a theoretical thing. I mean, you can see uh, how many tourists do you see in Namibia at the moment, or let's say international tourists. Mm -hmm. So it's really a practical thing that those industries, or how many people have we seen flying in the country since March last year? Mm -hmm. So those industries arguably were maybe the most hardest hit of all the uh, the industries in Namibia, I can say. I mean, we saw that the Bank of Namibia statistics there, where they concluded that the tourism and hospitality have decreased by 70%. I mean, yeah. that is a big number. Mm -hmm. uh, that is statistics. If we talk about 70%, you are talking about really serious consequences. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that uh, really these are the industries which were hard hit. And therefore, logically, then, if this is the, the tourism is the one of the industry which is really hard hit, somehow they must enjoy kind of like preference to assist them. Yeah. Because uh, then otherwise, how will, how will they recover? Mm -hmm. They must be some sort of assistant to this company. Otherwise, I mean, if you're talking about a 70% reduction in activities, how will they recover? How will yeah. they generate uh, revenue? Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't want to operate or generate revenue, but uh, the instrument through which they generate revenue, which is the tourists, yeah. has been removed. And mm -hmm. therefore, for that reason, they need assistance. Yeah. Okay, so the debate about the stimulus, uh, stimulus part, the question of uh, maybe funds availability. Mm -hmm. I told you that the tourism industry is really a diverse uh, industry. Having how many numbers? Maybe 5,000 uh, players in there, from yeah. small to largest. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about the stimulus package, can you really be able to afford to give each and every player in the tourism industry? Uh, yes, in principle, they, the tourism industry is supposed to enjoy some financial support. Mm -hmm. But the big question, which I can't answer now, is that can we be able to afford to provide financial assistance to each and every tourist operator in the Namibian tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And from where does that uh, support come from? Is it from the government? Is it from the financial institutions? Is it for the, from the insurance? I don't know. It's just really a question of, is it really practically affordable? Mm -hmm. I can't answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so going forward, how do you see the pandemic changing the landscape of the tourism sector as a whole? Yeah, I think, like I've been trying to describe to you, the tourism sector has really been hit by a, by a wake-up call, mm -hmm. like never seen before. It's really a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. Those companies in the tourism sector who are putting measures in place now or preparing one of the days the industry will recover they are the one who will cash mm -hmm. uh, from that uh, recovery of the tourism industry yeah so i think it's really trying to see what new measures can one come up with mm -hmm. there is no textbook to copy from <laughs> because what COVID has brought is that uh, it's a seen before experience yeah. So it is really about innovation, coming up with new things, how to conduct the business. Yeah. Uh, it is no use crying about spilled milk, about and so on, but it's really about trying to imagine how to implement new things so that uh, uh, the company can be able to, to operate uh, maybe post-COVID. Uh, New things I'm talking about in terms of NWR, you are looking at um, 
was doing now. In the past, I think this interview, we should have done it face to face. Yeah. But as you are seeing, we are doing it virtually. Mm -hmm. So the world is really moving to that digital presence. We have to conduct business digitally. NWR should be able to facilitate bookings online, virtually, or digitally. That is where the world is moving. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's putting in those uh, measures is likely to, to benefit from the recovery when the tourism uh, recovers. Yeah. I think even if the tourism think people will do face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and uh, contacts and things like that. I think the digital presence, it needs to be entrenched. That is how the world will be. Yeah. I think in terms of NWR, media, can, we are looking at, for example, coming up with a 24-hour SMS line. Mm -hmm. That even if mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, Matthias, wake up 12 o'clock in the, in the night and you want to conduct business or you want to do a booking, you yeah. can send to that uh, SMS mm -hmm. line and we should be able to respond. You see, yeah. like that kind of technology the world is moving in and this is the things we are also trying to consider yeah. and also to do yeah. with coming up with new products really what covid has taught us is that uh, you cannot rely on a single market man like yeah. how we have been that there yeah, the tourists uh, international tourists will come we have realized that we have to focus both the domestic uh, leg as well as the international leg yeah. because the over reliance on the international leg or one market is having its own consequences. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the way also our reliance on one product can yeah. also have uh, serious consequences. And therefore, we have to diversify things like, uh, for example, uh, we're planning, for example, if the Namibian Sun want to organize a, a, a tour for their, um, for their employees, you can come to us, we can uh, arrange for you a specific tour for you, yeah. do a tour for you, and then, you know, things like that. This is the type of things we are considering. So, yeah. in summary, we cannot go back and say this is how we used to do it or how we used to know the tourism industry. Yeah. What COVID is teaching us is that we have to be innovative and come up with new ideas. It's all to think about new ideas. Yeah. So... In terms of convenience to customers, that will be the big theme in the industry. Nobody wants to stand in queues and things like that, and they have offer convenience, yeah. as well as also the digital presence. I told you those will really be themes in the industry. Yeah. Uh, maybe just um, um, speaking to the, the public regulations around the COVID-19 and so on, um, would, you, would you say in terms of consultation, um, government is, is uh, doing enough to ensure that your plight as, as, as industry player is accommodated when these uh, regulations are, are, are drawn up? Um, yeah, it, the line was it. I didn't get the, the full question. So your government is doing enough In to terms of consultation. hear the views of the That's correct. Uh, yeah, I think it has to do with, like I said, uh, the tourism industry have its own associations and bodies. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is really partly to do with those bodies to make their voice heard. Uh, I think in this world, 21st century, it is about to, the one who pro ideas maybe forcefully to others yeah. or the one who can convince others. Mm -hmm. and the one whose ideas will be accommodated and so on. Yeah. So I'm just saying we cannot just partly blame government. It is mm -hmm. to do with ourselves in the industry. Yeah. Nice enough and speaking with one voice so that outsiders, including government, can, can, can listen to us. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is maybe the starting point. We, yeah. we really do some... Maybe it's partly to do with the diversity of the industry telling you. Mm -hmm. to balance the view of a small operator against a big operator, I mean, that is really uh, enormous. Yeah. And therefore, I think it's for the tourism industry 
leaders must emerge there in the industry who can speak for the boys, for the interests of the tourism industry, yeah. and not necessarily looking at own company. Yeah. For example, necessarily have to speak on behalf of just NWR. Yeah. I must have a bigger purpose of talking on behalf of the industry. Get mm -hmm. organized, speak with one voice. I think if we do that, uh, outsiders, including government, will be able to date us. But I know at the moment they say there are bodies there who um, speak to government to try to give the voice of the tourism industry. To what extent they are effective in making their voices and ideas heard? by government, I can tell, but yeah. I think those attempts are there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Doctor, just mm -hmm. lastly, um, what would you say, how, how do we find the balance between fighting the pandemic, but also at the meantime ensuring that uh, while fighting the pandemic, we don't suffocate the industry in which you operate? Uh. <sighs> Yeah, no, uh, no, that is a that is a big, big question to find. Out. Um, I think all over the world they are searching for that answer. How to find uh, how to find a balance? I don't know whether there is a country in the world which got that balance. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Maybe the so-called developed countries has, yeah. but uh, it's really a difficult question. Mm -hmm. I think the the, the 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 big question to me is. That which has disrupted our life since March 2020. Mm -hmm. How can we get it out, out of our society? That is yeah. maybe to me the first starting point. Mm -hmm. What has disrupted the virus we now know as COVID or mm -hmm. coronavirus? That is what has disrupted our life. Yeah. And therefore, how can we make sure that we eliminate take away this thing which has disrupted our life. So I think how you can go back to normal or try to restore some semblance of normalcy mm -hmm. is to, to kick out the virus. Yeah. How can you do that? This is this debate come from of I think one of the maybe well known or propagated notion of trying to kick out that virus is through mm -hmm. vaccination. Yeah. We will return to normalcy if we kick out the virus. How do we kick it out? If we are told we uh, the, the, the big number of people get vaccinated, mm -hmm. that is how it will go away. That is now the field of the medical science and health and things like that. Yeah. That is what they tell us. And I think it's not a new thing. We have seen people before in fact, we are not the first one to experience a pandemic. It has been there before. Mm -hmm. We hear about the Spanish flu mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. How did they get it out? Told medically through vaccination. That is how you kick it out. Yeah. And that is why maybe mm -hmm. if you ask me, how can we go back to normalcy? Is to kick out the virus. And that at the moment we now know, and also if we can get the biggest number of people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, that is how, that is the actually maybe, how we will return to normalcy. Or is there other way how we can return normalcy? <laughs> if, if the infection is still there, if the death rate is still there, how can we eliminate infection and death rate? Yeah. If we can uh, maybe get vaccination, that is how we can eliminate. I don't know if other, other ways how we can claim to go back to normalcy if it is not through that through that method yeah which has also worked for other diseases i believe i mean you had uh, uh, polio uh, you know things like that and yeah. uh, that is how we are told you get it rid of it mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, dr Gongama, thank you very much for your perspective we highly appreciate your insight yeah, I also thank you for the opportunity. Uh, um, I hope I have contributed to something or I have said something which is meaningful yeah. to somebody uh, mm -hmm. out there. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah.